How's everyone doing? Uh, today I want to show you guys how to set up a Kubernetes cluster onto a Proxmox cluster that is uh, orchestrated through two different machines. I have uh, a Dell R720 PowerEdge server and a Dell R610. It's older hardware, but it still works. And I still, because I have two machines, I'm able to have high availability for all my applications. So with this, uh, I want to just go ahead and kind of lay out the plan for today. Um, so we have our two power edge servers and with this, we're going to be setting up VMs and we're going to be setting up a whole cluster of different VMs. We're going to have one VM like this. And then, uh, in this case, we're going to have eight VMs. Um, and this VM up here is going to be a specific one. That's a little more special because he's going to have a Docker instance running on him. And this Docker instance will be running rancher. Uh, if you don't know what Rancher is, Rancher is an open source, uh, amazing tool that allows you to essentially um, orchestrate a whole Kubernetes cluster very easily. It also allows uh, the dictation of that Kubernetes cluster. So once we set up Rancher, it will make it super easy for us to actually set up the control nodes and the worker nodes for our Kubernetes cluster. Um, and once that's done, then we have our cluster, right? It's nothing too crazy. This is kind of how the system's going to be looking. It's going to be nine different VMs. Um, it's going to be a lot of setting up for those VMs. But yeah, with this, uh, I want to go ahead and show you guys what we should do to get started. And we're going to jump over to an Excel spreadsheet to kind of go through the details of how we need to break this down. So what you're going to want to do is go to an Excel spreadsheet and you're going to want to write out what your machine one has in terms of CPU and its RAM and then machine two for your CPU and RAM, right? And then uh, you want to see the totals for everything. So CPU here is 2424, RAM is uh, 62 and 47. It's not, it's 64 and 48, but um, Proxmox uses a little bit and reserves some for itself. Um, I'm not sure why it uses more on the bigger one than small one i don't know but that's that's roughly what it equated to and then um i put some uh specific ones for the rancher node uh that we're gonna have to have the rancher vm and then down here you you'll have to write out your node count uh this is gonna have the amount of nodes that you want in each i'm gonna want two control nodes and two uh two worker nodes on both so four is what i'm looking for and then with this, uh, you can see here, I can split up my CPU. This gives you a general idea of what you need. And then from here, we're going to do just a little bit of extra work where uh, I think uh, bring it down to multiples of two. I think it just looks nicer and it leaves Proxmox with a little bit of extra space. So this gives me a general idea of what I need each VM to have. Um, I highly recommend doing this as a first step and then we can continue with the next. So switching over to Proxmox, we're gonna go ahead and get started by creating a VM. Um, you can see here, I'm just gonna name this first one, the Rancher UI, uh, no spaces. And then um, I want it to boot on start. And then here we're gonna select our disk. Um, I decided to choose Ubuntu live server. I thought that was a good one to uh, do for all of these. For the storage space, um, I'm not gonna put too much for the Rancher UI. It really doesn't need too much. And then here, you can also see um, I'm choosing to do the four uh, CPU cores and then uh, the eight gigs of RAM that this is gonna require. So with this, we should be completed with creating the first virtual machine for the Rancher UI. Now we're going to go ahead and make all the other virtual machines. Um, it's very repetitive. The best way to do this is going to make a template of a virtual machine. So we're going to make a second virtual machine that's going to be the same for all the nodes. Uh, this virtual machine will have the details, the CPUs, the RAMs that uh, we had specified in our Excel spreadsheet. And then we're going to use this template to create all the other virtual machines per node in the cluster. So this PVE instance, and then the other PVE two instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that right now. I'm gonna speed this footage up and then uh, we'll come back after all of that is made. So all the VMs have been created 
And uh, with this, we can go ahead and continue on from here. We're gonna be launching the Rancher UI and we're gonna be start by configuring and actually setting up that environment. So yeah, a lot of this is just gonna be setting up your standard uh, Ubuntu instance. And uh, yep, I'm just gonna accept these first few pages. This one here, uh, the network, really important. Um, with these nodes, they all need to be essentially static IPs. You can't have them change uh, from beneath you. And sometimes if the machine goes offline and something else takes uh, the IP that it used to be, it could actually mess up your cluster. So to fix this and kind of restrict it, um, I actually am currently using PFSense as my firewall for my home internet. Uh, I'm actually gonna go in there and set uh, static IPs for uh, the MAC addresses of the virtual machines. What this will do is it will restrict each machine to be uh, whatever IP that I set. That way they don't change over time and um, I don't have to worry about that issue ever arising. If you don't have PFSense, you could try to do the same thing in uh, most of most modems, I believe, and routers just, I believe, have a way of setting static IP, static addresses to specific MAC addresses. As you see, these Proxbox things give you that MAC address. Just go through and set each MAC address to a static IP uh, for every virtual machine and you'll be good to go. So now uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Our static IP addresses should be assigned properly. Uh, with this, we're gonna go to this page. This page is verifying that your mirror uh, for the different packages for Ubuntu are accessible. Um, it's good to do it on the first one. You don't have to do it for every single machine. It's going to take forever. Uh, I did it for the first one. I didn't do it for any of the others. Um, it does take a little while. Once it's done, uh, you're just going to hit done. And then, uh, we're going to just, I'm going to make sure just to choose the entire disc for the rancher. Um, I don't have multiple, so this one just works. And then here, it's just kind of going over through everything. I'm just going to partition it, leave it as is. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Um, yep, I'm good with that. Don't have to worry about it deleting data. There was no data. And now for this portion, uh, I want, I think what's best for you is to use your real name or like your first name. Uh, give that server a unique name per thing. This one's going to be John Rancher. Um, and then I'm going to use the same username and same password for every machine. I know that's not best security practices, but since I'm having to retype this so many times, uh, that's what I'm going to do. Um, in the future, I will re rename the passwords. I'm going to keep the same username. I think it, 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 having too many usernames can get way too complicated, way too quickly. So, uh, with this, uh, I'm also going to recommend installing open SSH. Uh, it's very important to have open SSH for this process uh, and you'll see why later on. Um, and then here, uh, also make sure to have Docker installed for the Ranger UI. Uh, Docker is very important for this guy um, to actually be able to set up our cluster. So after all of that, uh, we can hit done on this page and we should be good to go. So after it's installed, um, one thing I like to do is I actually remove the ISO from our uh, CD drive. Uh, that way, uh, like, it's a little more realistic on how the machine is set up. You don't have to do this, um, but it does guarantee that the install went correct. So now that the machine is running, so we have to turn on SSH. And to be able to do this, we have to do sudo systemctl start SSH. So that's gonna start the OpenSSH server. And then we should be able to type in our username and our IP address for that given uh, virtual machine, for this case, the Rancher. Uh, we should be able to actually access it from our host or our, our main machine when you're actually uh, going through this interface on. And then, so now we'll be able to copy and paste the command that we actually need. But to even use this command, we have to do sudo su, which gives us root access, or you can just do sudo docker run dash d and everything else. So what this command is actually doing is it's exposing two ports for Rancher, that's port 80 and port 443. Um, it is also giving the pod the name Rancher. It's using the image of Rancher slash Rancher. Uh, and it's saying, hey, restart unless stop. So it's always running 
no matter what, unless we specifically stop it. So uh, with this, our rancher instance should be running and then we should be able to go to the specific IP address um, over our LAN internet uh, to see our rancher dashboard. Okay, so now Rancher is running, and as you can see, Rancher is telling us uh, some commands that we're going to need to run, Docker PS and Docker Logs. We're going to use that container ID that the Docker PS puts out, and then we're going to grep our bootstrap password. By doing this, it's going to let us log in as the local admin, the local user, um, and then we're going to set our new password. This new password is going to be uh, one that is uh, for this UI, and anytime you're going to log in to actually manage your cluster, you're going to be using this new password. Uh, it does say the server URL, uh, so this is going to be whatever Rancher is installed on, whatever the IP address of this. You can see it from the uh, the bar, the URL bar. Um, it's correct. You don't need to change that. You can if you if you know what you're doing, but don't bother otherwise. And then here you go. Here's our beautiful Rancher dashboard. Okay, so now that we're in here, uh, you can see the side panel on the left side can give gives you some uh, controls over your Rancher cluster. Um, you can expand it if you want to see more. Um, but what we're actually going to focus on is hitting the button create. Uh, this is going to bring us over here where we can create a custom cluster. And uh, so, yep, first thing you need to do is give it a name. Um, I'm just going to name it home cluster, something simple, you know. And then with this, uh, I gave it a custom tag as well. Uh, you can do whatever uh, works for you. Um, and then we're gonna set the Kubernetes version. Um, I am doing RKE2, uh, and then just the latest version that I have, which is 1.3.2.4, or 1.32.4. Um, I'm not gonna change any of the member roles. I'm not gonna change much of anything else. You can just kind of flick through here as you want. So from here, we're just gonna hit create. Um, and then I think the defaults for everything is good. Uh, and then you can see here, now we have these step one, step two. Uh, first, we have to specify our node roles, and then we're gonna copy this curl command into the given virtual machine that we are setting it up as. So a control plane node has etcd control plane turned on, and then the worker node just has worker, nothing else. So uh, let's go ahead and step back, set up all those other VMs that we need to, uh, and then we're gonna SSH into all of them and start copying and pasting this command into each of them. It will take a while for you to do this. It took me a while. It was actually the most uh, time consuming part of this. And then once they're set up, paste this command into it. So now I have all of them set up um, and you can see here, uh, all eight VMs are SSH'd into, uh, I label them John Control 1, John Control 2, 3, 4, and then Worker Node 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, made it very clear for me which ones are which. Um, and then for this, uh, you can see here, I pasted the command, but nothing was loaded. Um, it was very confusing to me what had happened, but it actually says uh, password for John Coy, and I totally missed that. Um, it took me a while, and I didn't want to execute any of the other ones until I was I guaranteed that it had ran, but I could tell it froze up. Um, but yeah, eventually I typed in the password and then that kicked off the first one. And then for the rest of the control plane nodes, it's pretty much the same thing. You use the same command. Also, I use the unsecure version, which just means HTTP. Um, you're probably gonna need to use it too, unless you have an SSL uh, domain name for your server, which you probably don't for something, a home cluster and a home lab. So don't worry about that. Uh, it can be un insecure for this initial setup. And then yeah, so, and then for the worker nodes, uh, you just, it's the exact same command, except with dash dash worker. Um, you will just clone it and then make sure that you're using uh, that worker uh, check box is selected. Now we'll go back to the Rancher dashboard and we're gonna go click on tab machines. Um, you'll see all the machines listed here. It actually takes a really long time for all these to boot up. Uh, I think one of them took like 10 minutes for me. I'm not using the strongest hardware, so it might be way quicker for you. So here we're gonna wait until all these are done and then we're gonna go over to the dashboard and we should be able to see all everything actually working. So it's a very exciting moment, but that 
that kind of concludes all the setup that we're gonna need to do. Uh, again, a lot of it is just kind of monotonous, same old, same old stuff. Um, but yeah, now you have your own Kubernetes cluster and you can put whatever you want on it. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please subscribe below and yeah, see you guys next time.